There are so many backpackers every single year that plan on going to Australia, spending a year on a working holiday visa, getting a job right away, saving up a ton of money in Australia, and then traveling the rest of the world for a couple of years after working in Australia for a year. That is totally possible, and I wanna help you achieve that mission, but the sad reality is there are way too many people every year that land in Australia, on a working holiday visa and they end up flying back home two months later, three months later because they ran out of money. I don't want that to be you. I want to help you be the person that finds a job right away, gets a high paying job, is able to save a lot of money in Australia so you can travel the world for a long period of time after that. If you wanna see that, Make sure you hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's gonna help the video out a ton and make sure to subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more travel related content. How to travel the world if you're young and broke helps the channel out a ton. Thank you very much in advance for hitting the like button and hitting the subscribe button. All right, let's dive right into it. So right away, before we dive into the 11 best jobs for backpackers in Australia, I first wanna talk a little bit about applying for jobs. The way most backpackers end up applying for jobs in, in Australia is they will sit at their hostel, they'll be on their phone, they'll tailor their resume, and they will go online to seek.com or to Gumtree, and they'll spend a couple hours a day applying to jobs because they'll apply to 20 jobs in a day on their phone, okay? That is not the best way to land a job in Australia. The best way you're going to land a job in Australia is by applying in person. You're going to want to actually print off several different versions of your resume and hand them out in person to uh, the following 11 best industries. All right, with no further ado, let's dive into the 11 best jobs to have in Australia as a backpacker. Number 11 is a sales job. This is the only type of office job that you might end up actually finding in Australia. And there's a couple of reasons for this. A lot of people have work experience back in their home country. Maybe they're a web developer, a UX designer, or something like that, right? Um, well, if you have this type of experience, you might think that uh, a company is gonna wanna hire you for that experience in Australia, but unfortunately, that's not the case. And that's mostly the case because on a working holiday visa, you are only allowed to work for an employer for six months. So you might have a ton of experience, but this professional organization, if they're only able to keep you for six months, it's not really worth it to them. So they're gonna, they, these types of jobs, technically they could hire you, they're allowed to based off of your visa. So a lot of backpackers think they're gonna end up landing professional jobs. And that's simply not the case because these companies just don't wanna hire backpackers that they can only have on staff for no more than six months. The one exception to this though is sales where it's commission based and they don't really have to train you and they can fire you right away if you're not needing results, right? So I did have a little bit of success with finding a sales job. Uh, this is the one type of job that you can actually find online. Most of the time I recommend backpackers do not spend any time at all online trying to apply for jobs. It's really just a waste of time. A lot of backpackers will sit in the hostel all day on their phone, tweaking their resume and then submitting it to like 20 people in a day. And I have seen people apply to probably 500 jobs before and not get a single call back for one of these jobs. Applying online like that is really just a waste of time. What you're gonna to wanna to do for the most part is go for hospitality jobs and apply in person where they can actually see that you are a personable individual that they would like to work with. So this brings us to number 10, retail jobs. And um, the way that most backpackers approach applying for retail jobs is they think, oh, I'll, I'll apply to 20 jobs before noon because I'll go to the mall and I'll just hand out resumes at the mall right? Um, unfortunately, this is not the best way to apply for retail jobs because most of the businesses that are in malls are big established businesses in Australia that have a branch in every city in Australia, or at least most of them, right? So most of all these places want you to actually apply online. And then because you're applying online, 
you have a less likelihood of actually getting that job. And just in general, most businesses that want you to apply online are less likely to hire backpackers and more likely to hire Australians. But there definitely is the odd exception of the smaller retail shop that is a pretty good fit for a backpacker job. Number nine is working in a cafe. Cafes are great because there are so many cafes in every single city. Australians love their coffee. There's also a decent turnover rate in cafes, but the reality is you are actually not gonna land this job unless you have experience working at a cafe in your home country. That's why it's so far down on this list, okay? But if you plan on going on a working holiday visa to Australia in a couple months, you can get a job at a cafe in your home country and do that for a couple months. And then that is a great way to be able to find work everywhere you go once you get to Australia. Number eight is hotels. Hotels hire a lot of backpackers. This is one, another exception where um, I always recommend going in person and applying at a hotel, like walking there physically, saying hi to the hiring manager. A lot of them are gonna have you apply online, but if you talk to them in person, you have a much better chance of getting that job. Next best job to have if you're in Australia on a working holiday visa is actually a job at a hostel. This is actually two different types of jobs, okay? Um, let's take the example of a smaller hostel that employs five people. Of those five people, two are probably receiving a paycheck from the hostel, and then the other three are working there um, they're not actually receiving a paycheck, but they're receiving free room and board. They're receiving free, free bed and free food for the most part. Oftentimes like a free couple of drinks each night at the bar as well. So this is really two types of jobs, depending on how you're wanting to travel Australia. The, um, the free accommodation is a great thing to get into. If you really want to explore Australia quite a bit, if you want to see you know, if you wanna spend time in like 10 different cities in Australia and you're not really gonna necessarily be staying in a city long enough for it to be worth finding a job everywhere you go, um, if you can get some experience under your belt working for hostels um, by doing, doing this odd work, right? Sweeping the floors, cleaning the toilets, making the bed, stuff like that. If you can take out your biggest expense, your, your room and board everywhere you go, that is a great way to travel Australia and see as much of Australia as possible. Then you have the other two people that are working at the hostel that are working like, typically this is more of a managerial role, someone that's working the front desk or uh, working the hostel in a more managerial role. This is someone that probably has stayed at the hostel for a long time. And um, a hostel is only gonna hire someone for a paid position if that person basically promises to work for them for that full six months. They're not gonna to wanna to hire someone for a paid position unless they're gonna be staying there in that one city for a long time. So two very different types of roles when it comes to hostel work, up to you. All right, the next best type of job to have in Australia when you're on a working holiday visa is a tourist job. What I mean by this, several types of jobs are um, working at a pub crawl event or doing promotion for a pub crawl, working at a for a tour company, maybe doing a little bit of admin or actually helping assist in running a tours. Typically a, a tour agency, a tour group is gonna have an Australian doing all the talking, but maybe you're helping them out in some capacity. Um, another great um, job that falls under this is actually running a pedicab business. So I, I almost did this when I was uh, living in Cairns. My first job ran out. I, I worked my six months at my first job. And then I almost did this. It sounded really, really cool, but I decided to leave Cairns and explore more of Australia instead. But basically the way a lot of these pedicab businesses operate is they get a big house somewhere where like the 20 to 50 pedicab drivers in that city that are all backpackers all live in the same house. So it's kind of this community where like you stay for free or cheap. Um, some of your, you know, I think some of your proceeds go to paying for accommodation, but it's pretty little as long as you're making the company money. Um, but you basically rent a pedicab, you pay a certain amount each week to have this thing. And then everything you make above and beyond that is yours to keep. 
So if you work 60 hours, if you're okay working 60 hours, you can actually make a ton of money doing this. It's a really interesting um, job where you have this interesting social dynamic. It's kind of like a hostel, but everyone's in it doing the same thing, all working the same job. And uh, it, I think it could really be a lot of fun. Job number five is being an au pair or doing some sort of childcare when you're in Australia. This work typically doesn't pay a whole lot. Uh, the, the next ones, the, the next best are ones that actually do pay quite a bit more, but um, this job doesn't pay a whole lot, but you're living with a family and they're providing you your housing and your food. So these jobs really depending on the city you're in and how many kids they are, um, you could make between like 150 and five, $600 a week. Oftentimes this is just cash in hand too. You're not paying taxes on this. Um, but keep in mind, you don't have any accommodation or food expense. One note on this is if you were doing this, I, I would say it's really important to make sure that you're still uh, meeting other backpackers. You could, it'd be very easy to just spend a whole bunch of time with that one family and not really get to meet other travelers on a working holiday visa. I had a really good friend that was an au pair when I lived in Perth and she kind of had the best of both worlds and this would be the way I'd, I'd recommend setting this up, right? Where she would work as an au pair all day while the parents were at work taking care of the kids and then when the parents got home, she would head over like, she would walk like a mile to the hostel where I was living and she had her whole like friend group. There were there were like 45 of us that were all living in this hostel for like three months. So she would come over there and hang out with us all day. So she'd still have her like backpacker friends, but then she was working and living, you know, she had a nice roof overhead. She didn't have to deal with the, you know, sleeping in a 10 bed dorm at the hostel. She had a nice roof over her head, was making cash money at her job um, and kind of had the best of both worlds. And that is uh, definitely one way to make this type of job really work out in your favor. <sighs> uh, I hate to break it to you guys, but uh, the third and the fourth best job to have in Australia on a working holiday visa is really, really not that great. Um, it is farm work and fishing work. The reason these two jobs, okay, these jobs suck. I personally did three days of farm work when I was in Australia on a working holiday visa and I left to go find a bartending job because it sucked. But the reason these jobs are so high up on the list of best jobs to have in Australia is because if you do 88 days of farm work or fishing work when you're in Australia on your first working holiday visa, you can have your first working holiday visa extended to a whole second year. And then additionally, if you do six months of this type of work in your second year, you can actually stay for a third year in Australia. So that's why this work is so high up on the list. It really, really sucks. I don't like this work. I don't want you to have to do this work. But if you want to stay in Australia for a second and a third year, it's this is the way to do it. It's doing this type of work. But on the plus side, this work can actually pay pretty well. All right, guys, there's only two types of jobs left. Okay, are you ready for it? The second best job to have in Australia as a working holiday visa holder is a construction job. Construction jobs actually pay quite a bit of money and construction companies will hire backpackers to do this work. So a low end construction job, you're making like 25 bucks an hour Australian. And on the high end, I've heard backpackers making as much as $55 an hour. So that's pretty good. This is the best paying backpacker job you can get, but it is a bit more dangerous, okay? Additionally, I don't know how you feel about this, but a lot of construction jobs will be willing to pay you cash in hand. So they're not paying taxes and you're not paying taxes on that income. All right, guys, we made it. The number one best job to have in Australia on a working holiday visa, in my humble opinion, is a restaurant job. Okay, this is for a couple of reasons. First of all, this includes bartending jobs, serving, doing the dishwashers, being a cook. Restaurant jobs are great for backpackers because restaurants hire backpackers. That's the main thing. Restaurants hire backpackers every restaurant has lots of backpackers working there in all of those capacities, okay? So that's great. But also, 
It's a numbers game. Applying to restaurants is, and landing a job at a restaurant is a numbers game. There is such high turnover at restaurants. People are leaving all the time to go do something else. Go, someone A traveler's leaving to move on to the next city or an Australian is going back to school or whatever it is. People are coming in and out of restaurants all the time. So all it is is handing your resume out to a restaurant on the day that someone leaves and you're basically guaranteed a job. That's the number one reason I think restaurants are the best job to go for when you're in Australia on a working holiday visa. You could definitely land a dishwashing job without any experience, but if you want a job, if you want to land a job really fast, I highly recommend getting a bartending job or a serving job or a job as a cook in your home country before you leave. If you're planning a trip for several months out, you're going to Australia in several months, quit the job you're doing right now, get a job in a restaurant because it is gonna help you so much in landing that restaurant job in Australia. There you guys go, the 11 best jobs to have in Australia as a backpacker. I hope you learned something from here. I don't wanna discourage you from going on the working holiday visa, not at all, but I want you to be aware that it can be difficult to find a job, but if you're applying to these jobs in these 11 best industries, right? And then um, you also apply in person, you have a much better chance of finding a job really quick and, and living that travel dream, right? Saving enough money in Australia in one year to travel Asia, travel South America for two years. You know, you get three years of travel for one year of work while you're traveling. It is an amazing dream. It's totally possible, um, but just keep in mind, I would recommend focusing on those 11 jobs first and trying to find a job right away when you land in Australia because it could take a little bit longer than you expect. All right, and if you hung on to the very bittersweet end, you are very serious about going to Australia on a working holiday visa, I highly recommend you check out this video, which is a complete guide to going to Australia on a working holiday visa. Everything that you need to know before you go. And I highly recommend it, guys. You are gonna absolutely love Australia on a working holiday visa. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.